Come on in, welcome to my home. Today, we are talking about seven. Seven freezer meals that I made to test out, to see how it worked, and to see if I could actually freeze them, would they taste good, and what did I learn? I mean, because last week, if you haven't seen that video, click that card, I did the whole frozen entrees slash frozen dinners that were pre-made. Those were pretty good. No, they weren't. They weren't pretty good. I only found one that I actually, one or two that I actually liked. So I thought, well, why not try making these myself? So the recipes are linked down below in the description. I will go through quickly and explain with a voiceover how I made them. And they were actually really good. Let's start off with the chicken enchilada recipe. This was really easy to make. I mean, you just set your oven at 350 degrees, then you start making it. Follow this recipe completely, except for one thing. Uh, I do two differences, but you should probably do just one. The thing which I would say that it needs to have more of was the enchilada sauce. I did not feel that this had very much enchilada sauce whatsoever. And also, instead of using the Monterey Jack uh, cheese sticks or cheese wedges, I just used shredded Monterey Jack. I don't think it made that big of a difference in the recipe. It went together so fast, and it was so good. And yes, I did use uh, pre-cooked chicken. This was chicken that you can buy already, basically shred it from the store. It works out really well and tastes oh so good. So you don't have to worry about anything to be added to that. Everything else, I followed the recipe just exactly like it is. And I think that really helped, helped work out to the best. And it's really easy to do. This is one of those recipes where once you make it, you then just throw it into the freezer and you are done, which is the important part about that. I think it was just about now that I realized that there was not enough enchilada sauce, but it works out in the end, so that's all that matters. I did, and you see me brushing on there, and yeah, that's not even close to enough enchilada sauce. Now it gets covered, and then you just bake it for the exact amount of time that it says in the recipe. Once you are done baking it, take it out, and then you need to let this cool. That's the whole big thing. Before you store anything, you need to let it cool. This is where our problems start, is the fact that I decided that I could just put this in aluminum foil and then wrap it up to store it. And what happened was it stuck. I should have sprayed the aluminum foil down with something so that that way it didn't stick to the pan, but didn't stick to the aluminum foil, but I didn't. Lesson learned. So that's something you can think about. So if you're storing yours, remember, think of ways that you're going to make sure that nothing sticks to it and anything and anything like that. But now we're ready to go on to our next recipe which is barely a recipe. I'm telling you this right now. The spaghetti recipe is barely a recipe. All I did for the spaghetti was brown the spaghetti, it was brown the uh, ground beef. And the reason I made so much of it is because I knew that I was gonna use this recipe for more than one thing. I just browned it. And then once it was brown, I did pour off the excess grease. I added my uh, spaghetti sauce to this. And that's the best part about this is I did not make my own spaghetti sauce. You do not need to make your own spaghetti sauce every single time. This was going to be used for my yard of pizza and also my spaghetti. They could be very easily taken care of, frozen, and just put in its own individual size container and thrown into the freezer or with the yard of pizza, which we'll talk about in a minute. You then just finish it up. It's realistically a hundred percent that easy. Now we are on to the stuffed chicken rolls, which I can tell you these do not look as pretty as they do in the picture. The reason behind that is I did not flatten my chicken breast out as much as I should have. I couldn't find my meat mallet to flatten them out, but everything else went exactly like it should. It rolled it up, put a toothpick in it, and that made it so easy to do. 
Uh, you want to make sure that you are handling, of course, raw chicken with the most delicate, most care. So I did. I made sure that all the chicken was was handled well. I made sure that I washed my hands, cleaned up everything that I would possibly need to clean up. And then we are now going to make our, um, I would say, breading. It's a flour mixture so that that way it will coat it and it helps it brown. The browning is sort of nice on this. It gives it a nice crisp uh, appearance and everything. You want to make sure that you get all sides done on this. If you manage to get your chicken flatter than I did mine, it will co help it cook faster. But if you don't, it's okay. So once we have everything coated and another washing on the hands, now we are going to brown it fry it in the uh i'm using the wonderful cast iron skillet which i absolutely adore uh we just put those in there and let them do their thing once they are nice and browned on one side you're just going to very easily and very gently uh since this is a non-stick kind of pan you're going to very gently flip those over and you notice how nicely browned they are you do want to try to brown them on all sides before you do before you move on to the next step once they are completely brown and you'll know when they're completely brown the skin like I said it it does it goes really fast it looks really good i did have some cheese oozing out in certain places and you do need to flip it over a couple times in a couple different places but once it is all done you are ready to go ahead and uh, put it into your slow cooker these were really nice you can do this put this into the slow cooker I found for me that one of those uh, makes the meal now this is just our soup and when, like I said I did not do any made it you know made everything from scratch kind of thing nope I did everything just as the recipe called for you could go that extra step make it all from scratch but you do not want you do not need to the other thing to think about on this one is it is not <laughs> the most attractive of a uh, dish when it is cooking yeah that's that's sort of what it looks like before it cooks but once it has cooked it is so good now we are on to our slow cooker chuck roast another really easy and really good recipe once you get all of your ingredients together and i had my recipe on the phone uh putting this one together was so simple if you are not sure about all of your measurements you can then measure them out but i've been doing this for so long that i knew exactly how much i wanted to measure or how much everything was so measuring out the ingredients was really really simple it goes together so fast that's what I really like about this, is that in no time you have everything that you want into the into your slow cooker, which then does all the heavy lifting for you. You don't have to worry about uh, watching it and taking care of it and all those sort of things. You can then just mix all the ingredients together for the sauce, which was really, really, really simple to do. And then once it's all mixed, then it's time that you can then add your beef or add your, I'm sorry, you add your vegetables first, then on top of your vegetables, which those are onions and uh, uh, peppers, then you add your beef and then you're ready to cook it in the slow cooker. Once it has cooked, you can take this out and the beef is nice and tender. Then I divided mine into three pieces. Then you're supposed to uh, strain your juices out so you can use those for the things once again this is where i should have used them i should have used some some something that i could put f straight from the freezer into the oven and we're going to look at that next week when i do all that but yeah so i'm straining my broth out making sure that i divide all of the vegetables up in between my now three bags of stuff <laughs> three bags of uh, mixture which will have my meat my vegetables and then something even better which was what i think really made me like this a whole lot more because 
with that, if I would have done the extra step of just letting that cool, and I should have put it in the refrigerator, I could have gotten off the extra grease from the broth, and then it would have helped keep that much grease out of the um, out of the gravy. However, there was not enough grease there that it, that became a problem. So I'm just now trying to pour it back into a mixing bowl. Once I have it from there, I'm checking it out, trying to get a little of the grease out so that that way I can make sure that it works really well. And then we add our gravy into our bags and seal it up and try to get enough so that there is an even amount of gravy. This is the, uh, the Baja pork tacos. Once again, slow cooker does most of your work for you. This is where I did make a change. I th did not have five cans of chilies. Instead, what I used was one can of chilies, and then I used um, onions, peppers, and then a little bit of uh, beef bouillon to get that sort of that taste. I did add some of the sprinkled in some pepper flakes in there. I did use also the rest of the uh, taco seasoning, then dump that over top of my pork, and guess what? It's ready to go. <laughs> now you just cook it and you are done. That's the cool part about all of that. It works really so quickly. This is the five spice powder, which you will use for the Asian chicken thighs. I made my own five spice powder because I could not find any locally, and the link to the recipe is down there in the description, but it is super easy to make, especially if you have your own spice grinder. I personally have my own spice grinder specifically for this kind of thing. It is so simple and so cool to have your own spice grinder, then you can make your own spice mixtures. This one went together so easily, and I mean, you can grind it as fine as you want. It smells just absolutely delicious with the cinnamon and the uh, anise. It just is so, so good. Then once you have your spice mixture all ground up, you're going to want to put that into a container. I did make sure that I tried to get off out of all the powder before you reach into any sort of electric grinder like this. The thing that you want to do is make sure that it is unplugged. Don't put your hands into there because we don't want to have anything happen to your fingers. I pour my spice mixture into a container that I can completely seal, make sure that it is airtight, and we are ready for using that but that comes later because we have something else which comes first which is our yard of pizza now a lot of people know this as pizza bread or that sort of thing i have made a whole entire video on this if you click one of the cards which is showing up right now it will show you my yard of pizza day it is a really easy recipe because you're just spreading the uh, spaghetti mixture on top of garlic bread topping that with cheese and then you are heating that up in the oven. I like to freeze mine before I do that heating up part, so that way it's really simple, but that's really easy. So now we're on to our Asian chicken thighs. Once again, this is a really easy recipe, and this is what I'm using my five spice mixture for. All the recipes are listed down below in the description. You can follow them, you can do your own changes to them. You can make it spicy or less spicy, depending upon what you like. This was just so good and so easy to make. It took no time whatsoever to throw this all together and it tasted so good. I am using already minced garlic because it's something which can save time and that becomes a big thing when you want to save time use anything that you possibly can to save yourself that extra time once you have and there's our our mixture once you have everything into your bowl you're going to whisk it together and then you're ready you are absolutely ready to start working with the chicken the chicken part is really easy you are going to just oil up your pan. I love this 
it's a very heavy cast iron type of skillet. It heats up and then once it is nice and heated up, you can then throw your chicken in there. I will tell you something about this chicken. If you notice, that chicken is frozen solid. It is a solid block of chicken, which is fine. It heated up, it did everything. Once it is browned and cooked sort of through, then you throw in your uh, mixture, which I was got sloppy with it. I won't. I won't lie to you. I threw in my mixture and cooked my chicken all the way through. You bring this up to a boil. You let it simmer, and then once it's done simmering, you then want to do the whole making sure everything gets a nice rotation, so that way you get the flavor all the way through. Once it is fully, fully cooked. I removed my chicken so that that way I could do my cornstarch and water mixture right there into the pan. So I mix my cornstarch and water together. It becomes like a slurry which then helps thicken up what is going to become a gravy. You can you you can make this as thick or as thin as you want. I made mine a little bit too thick, but then I cooked it out so that you didn't even notice it. It tastes so good and it was so easy to make and the cool part about this was once everything is made you then add that chicken back into there and you are all set for having dinner you can then oh i let mine cool and then i did my portions were two chicken thighs per portion you could do one, you could do all four, it's up to you. And I made sure to get that gravy in there because it tasted so good. You don't want to miss a single drop of that. It is just absolutely wonderful. The recipe is just so simple to make. And if you have all the ingredients on hand, you don't have to go out and buy anything. Now the one thing which I also, this is the one time you see me doing it, I wrote down on each package what it was, so that way there was no guessing or anything in the freezer when it was time to get it out. Making them were easy. Making them was easy. That really was the easy part. The reheating them, once again, the easy part. Let's talk about some of the mistakes that I made. One of the biggest mistakes that I made was not having freezer containers. Containers that I could take from the from the freezer to the oven, didn't have it at that time. However, next week's video, we are going to talk about containers that you can take from the freezer to the oven, which made a big difference. What other mistakes did I make? Well, one of the biggest ones is something that I would never do again. If I were doing this whole experiment again for a week's worth of food, I would have just made a double batch of everything so that that way that night I could have eaten whatever I made and then frozen the rest because that's a big thing. Doing the making the food and then making another set of food for that night's dinner, not the best idea, no. Now one of the things which I did learn, and I learned this a long time ago, is whenever you make freezer meals, freeze them in individual size containers. Freeze them in single serving size. Here's why. I know a lot of you are saying, but I have a whole big family. Well, that's great and everything, but a lot of times if you want a freezer meal or if you want a quick meal, you want something for probably one or two people. It is way easier to heat up six single servings than it is to heat up a serving for six when you only need a serving for one. Having the individual size containers then will free up like your life. You'll be able to change things up. Say you have a meal where five of you want one thing and one of you want something else, you have all of those individually done. Now all of mine, when I reheated them, I defrosted them in the refrigerator. I took them out the day before, put them in the refrigerator, they defrosted it mostly. Mm. Then I put them into the oven at 350 degrees for anywhere for about 45 to 35 minutes until they were done. Most of the instructions give you, like, most of the recipes give you instructions on reheating them. Then you could eat them. They were really good. They did not taste like frozen food. They tasted like, you know, normal food. And the other thing about this was it was a lot of fun to do because it was just so easy 
to just make a meal and freeze it. So what am I going to do? Well, going forward, I am going to once a month do two recipes, don't know what Wednesday I'll do these, but two recipes that I will just make ahead and freeze. And what I will do is I will make a double batch so that that way I can make the recipe and we'll have it that night. And then I can also freeze it and we'll have frozen food. And the nice part about this is, I think the longest that I've seen that these could keep was up to six months. I don't imagine that I would do that because if you've seen my weekend video, if you haven't, click that part, uh, click that card. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start using my frozen food, my frozen meals on the weekends. So that Saturday and Sunday, I don't have to cook. All I have to do is throw a frozen meal into the oven, heat it up, and we're ready to go. Well, that's actually a really good idea. Hmm. So do you have any frozen meals that you think are wonderful and you'd like to share the recipe with me? Let me know down in the comments. Are you considering making your own frozen meals and then freezing them so you can have them? Like I said, the big thing I would tell you is just make a double batch so that that night you can eat it and then you can freeze it and freeze it in individual containers. You will thank me for that much, much later. I hope you enjoyed this. At this time, I'd like to thank these wonderful people who let me go ahead and freeze my food and then thaw it out and eat it and tell you how good it was. And it was good. It was really good. These recipes were all really simple, really quick to make, and I had a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that if you are interested in becoming part of the Patreon family or part of the channel members where you get these videos early and you also get a weekly video <laughs> where you get, would have gotten to see me make these recipes during the week, uh, you get that. And so it's a really neat thing to do. We have some conversations there and it helps this channel expand and do bigger and better things because I have some big plans for this year. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope we get to see you again the next time you stop by.